Welcome back to Iron Anchor Cycles and one of the last segments in our Project FXDXI build series. As you can see, we've got the bike still sitting here on the lift and we're prepared to just about get to the finish line on this bike today. We've got a bunch of cool stuff to get done and a lot of button up to do and we should be hearing this bike run hopefully by the end of this video. So stick around if that's something that interests you. Definitely interests me. So I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing today and what we've done since the last video. As you can see here, the motor is obviously back together and that was something we did between the last segment and this one. As I mentioned in the last segment, this video series wasn't about how to do a motor on a, a dyna or a twin cam. We've got other videos on that, so if seeing the nitty gritty of assembling a twin cam motor is interesting to you, check one of those videos out, we've got a few. Um, but this video is really more about the rest of the bike. However, we obviously weren't gonna skip doing the motor because that's something we wanted to do on this one as well. I think we've covered that one enough. But needless to say, uh, we've got our motor back together. We've got our SNS 585 cams in there, our T-Man 98 inch top end with T-Man Street Performer heads and everything else pretty much just the way it came off. So we we're using a stock throttle body on this one, stock injectors on this one. Um, Pretty much we just sort of cleaned everything else and put it back together. So the motor's here and ready to go. Now that that's done, we can kind of start our final assembly and add a few more details on that we haven't gotten, haven't been able to do because the motor's been apart. So what we've got planned for today is we're gonna finish up our crash protection with an FXR Division crash bar to go on the front. We'll talk a little bit about that. We've got a case saver from Tracker Die, which is a cool little, really, really cheap insurance if you're planning on wheeling a Dyna. So, uh, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit when we get to it. And what else? We've got our foot control, our foot pegs to go on. Those are thrash and supply. We'll put a link to all those parts down in the description of the video. And let's see, what else? Obviously our tank's gotta go back on. That's probably just about it for new parts. And uh, well, <laughs> I might've forgotten two pretty important things there. Uh, we've got an air cleaner to go on and a pipe to go on. So we'll install the air cleaner, we'll show you that. We've got a stage one uh, big sucker from Arlen Ness. And then we've got a Trask two into one stainless pipe to go on here, which I'm real stoked to try and see how it works. So we're gonna install all that stuff today and then hopefully get this bike fired up so we can uh, all hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna get repositioned while I do that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do click the button down below. Also give the video a like if you're enjoying it, hopefully you are, it's helpful for us to know. And for the more we get interest, the more we'll keep doing these. So if you're liking them, that'd be awesome. So stick around, we'll get repositioned, let's get into it. All right, we're ready to dig in here. The first thing we're gonna do is get the case saver from Tracker Die put on. Now, I'm gonna show you what's included in the box here, but also talk a little bit about what this is and what it does. So, when you're wheeling a Dyna, particularly if you're learning, the likelihood of perhaps putting the front, front end down harder than you planned on is definitely a realistic possibility. And one of the known uh, break points on these bikes is with that repeated uh, impact to the front end, these front motor mounts here have a tendency to break which is obviously an incredibly expensive fix. Uh, and you gotta find somebody who could actually do it and do it properly. So while this is not 100% guarantee that that won't happen, it's some pretty cheap insurance, about 100 bucks, that will definitely help in the event that you have uh, some of that um, impact going on. So what it is, we'll open the box here, is essentially a little piece here that's gonna clamp around your frame rail and it's gonna sit up under the cam or cam cover, which is obviously connected to the case. And it's got a Durlin piece on here, which is the same thing you'd find at the end of like a, uh, like a crash bar slide or something like that. And that's gonna sit between this and here. And it is hopefully gonna catch the impact of the motor rather than breaking your motor mounts. So that's the theory of it. Uh, basically, it also comes in the box here. There are some shims. Now, these are uh, silver, obviously just regular metal colored. There are black ones. Uh, Tracker dies been not immune to the supply chain problems and they weren't, aren't, weren't able to get the black ones when we did this, but um, hopefully that'll be fixed soon. So if you order one, you might get these, you might get black ones, but they'll send you the black ones if you want. In any event, um, basically what you're trying to do is shim this puck up so that when it's sitting on top of here, and sitting under your cam chest that you get between a quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch of gap between the top of the puck and the bottom of the case or the cam chest. Now, one thing that's uh, worth noting here is that this will work with or without the stock exhaust bracket uh, that normally lives underneath the cam chest. Now, 
99% of people are not running a stock exhaust, but most people don't go to the step to actually take that bracket off because it's kind of a pain to do it. There's three torque screws that hold it in and without a couple of sort of modified little wrenches, it's very difficult to get uh, at least one of those three screws out uh, because it sits in between the frame rail and the case. So most people just leave the bracket there. Um, but if you like us have taken it off, this will still work and it'll work if you still got it there. So the first thing you wanna do is mock it up and see how many of these shims, if any, you're gonna need. In our case, I can tell just by looking at it, we've got a very big gap here. So we're gonna try it with all of them. Um, I'm just gonna take this little screw that holds this all together and just uh, start to thread it in. We're gonna take it apart and use Loctite on this obviously, but I'm just putting it in temporarily to have it all be held together. So we put this under here and basically you obviously wanna make sure that it's level and it looks like we are certainly um, not under a quarter of an inch. Um, I'd say we're probably just about three eighths of an inch. So all of the shims is what we're gonna use. So we'll take this apart and take that screw out. Need some blue Loctite. Okay, and we'll reinstall that screw into the top. Okay, so now with that all together, we will take the other four screws that come with the kit and we'll put some blue Loctite on those. And these are gonna be to attach the bottom to the top. So we'll slide this in here. And go to attach the bottom to the top here. Okay. Just gonna start each one and then we'll tighten them. All right, and that is as easy as that. So that's our tracker die case saver installed. If you're looking for one of those or for more info, link in the description. So with that installed, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start to put our new foot pegs on and get this uh, foot control back up in place. Now, I'm just gonna hold it here for you. Obviously, that did not have to come off to put this on. We just had this off because uh, we were doing the cam chest, obviously, and it does have to come off for that. So before I put the uh, foot pegs on, I'm just gonna uh, re-zip tie in place our uh, wiring harness here that I undid to put this in to move, make some room. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a couple of zip ties, re-secure this, and then we'll uh, move on to the foot pegs. So with the wiring harness re-secured, we're ready to move on. So we've got our Thrashen P54 foot pegs that are gonna go on here. I'll show you that. Hopefully these are familiar to you. Let's take these pieces out of the box. side. So we've got the foot peg. We like to go with the raw ones for this and while you might think black would be the obvious choice and it is the most popular finish, uh, the black anno, we decided the raw machine finish ones actually kind of match the raw um, highlights that are on all the covers including obviously the fins on the cylinder. We also have raw wheels so I just decided this would be a nice contrast to the black that we're running with everything else. So You've got the uh, clevis and the ARP screw. So this goes in here, that goes in there, and we'll put it together. I'm gonna put that aside for just one sec, because first, before we put those on, we gotta get this re-secured. Now, I've got some blue Loctite on each of these screws, and we're gonna get them started. Now, if you're paying attention, or were paying attention, you might notice that when we took these parts off, they were not black. These are not replacements, we just had them powder coated. So one of the things that we like to do if we've got a bike that's gonna be kind of apart for a while is we'll take all the parts that we wanna get refinished when we're doing the disassembly, we'll take them all off and just send them out to get powder coated. It's an inexpensive way to just clean everything up and get the look you're going for. So definitely a big fan of that. So that's back on, tightened down, brake still works. So we'll go ahead and get this foot peg put on. Now, 
one thing we want to do is on this screw, uh, you can use uh, Loctite. You can also use anti-seize. Um, that would be an option. But because this is stainless and this is stainless, I'm going to go with Loctite on this. If that was going into an aluminum piece, I probably would opt for uh, anti-seize instead of Loctite. I'm just going to snug that down. Now, obviously, we're not tightening it because we want to be able to set the angle once we've got it on the bike. So I'm going to take the bolt and lock nut and also don't forget the little spring washer. Um, if you lose these or yours aren't uh, curved anymore, they're very easy to get replacements for. So don't overlook it. So we're going to slide this in here. Now, ours slid in nicely, uh, and that's because there was probably some uh, metal worn down uh, with use on this one. So when the powder coating went on, it didn't make it too tight. Sometimes when you get parts powder coated, you will uh, have to do a little bit of work to get the parts to fit back together properly on some of the, the friction surfaces. All right. So that obviously needs to be tightened down, but I'm going to start here. Just take a look, get this level, and tighten that down. All right, so we got that installed. I'm just gonna tighten these up real quick and we'll move on. Okay, so moving on, our next item to go on is gonna be this crash bar from FXR Division. Now, there are a couple of different, or I should say there are a lot of different choices for crash bars out there for different bikes. We have a couple that we like ourselves. So if you're looking for a hoop style crash bar, the FXR Division one is our favorite. If you're looking for the traditional sort of peg slider with the Derlin slider ends on it, Bung King is our go-to there. Obviously we used the Bung King sliders on the back here, and we used Bung King front crash bars on a lot of bikes as well. But we decided to go with a hoop style one on this one, mostly for aesthetics, but also because there's something specific about this particular one that we really like. So it's maybe a little bit hard to see as we hold this up in the camera with nothing to, to scale it to, but this is just about the most narrow uh, hoop style crash bar that you can get. There are others out there. I know Crucy has one that's really popular. This one's narrower and it's still wide enough that it's gonna protect your tank, but it is narrow enough that it's not gonna create a problem for you trying to lane split or fit your bike somewhere. Um, and it also just looks really good as well. So these go on really, really simply. You've got one top mounting bolt and then you've got two um, bottom spots uh, that are gonna go on these spots on the frame where forward controls or highway pegs would go. Comes with five bolts, four are short, one is long. The long one has a nylock nut. The long one with the nut goes at the top, the other four go at the bottom. So I'm gonna get started and just get moving putting this on because I'm ready to hear this bike run. So we're gonna start with the top. And basically what this is gonna do is just kind of hold the crash bar for us and I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I promise I will move out of the way as soon as I've got this secured. Okay. All right. So there it is just hanging. Uh, that top bolt is really nice for that particular purpose. One thing worth pointing out, you don't have to have your pipes off or anything like that to do this. We just happen to, so we're doing it this way. So the next thing we wanna do, and hopefully I'm not gonna block the camera too much here. Nope, I think we're good, is we're gonna start the bolts for the sides. Now, what you wanna do, it's kinda just like anything else, is you wanna leave everything loose and then tighten it all together in sequence and going back and forth side to side. So we're starting with one upper bolt on each side and then I'm gonna do one lower bolt on each side. Okay. Come back over here. So now with it loosely in place, we're just gonna go ahead and start by tightening the bottom bolts and then we'll do the top bolt last. You may have also noticed that 
these all threaded in very, very easily. And that's not a coincidence. That is because we clean the threads out on these holes. No matter how old your bike is, if you didn't have bolts in there, you are going to have junk in those holes. And taking the time to clean the threads on any bolts or any holes is time well spent. Okay, so we got those snugged in place. I'm gonna take a look. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so now with everything pretty snugged, we're just gonna do a final torque on these and this will be done. And that's it for the crash bar. It's that easy. So let's move on. So the first step when you're putting on a new pipe, generally speaking, is to put on the bracket for it. Uh, most, in most cases, it's gonna attach to the transmission case somewhere, and that is the case with ours. It's gonna go right on like this. Now, different pipes, different manufacturers are gonna tell you to reuse OE hardware. They're gonna give you hardware. Just pay attention to what you've got, and also understand that uh, unlike in our case, where we're going from a stock pipe to something new, everything in the instructions should match up. If your bike had an aftermarket pipe with an aftermarket bracket on it already, there may be different hardware there, so if you're being told to reuse some OE stuff, make sure what's there is the same as what would have been there in the original case. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two studs that held the old bracket on, and then one more bolt from the bottom of the transmission case here. All right, so with our bracket on, we actually just added in uh, an extra screw here. There was an extra hole. Uh, rather than just leave it open, we just put an extra bolt in that we had here just to clean it up. Um, but that is on and ready to go. So next step is gonna be to prepare the head pipe. So we'll walk over to the workbench. We'll show you that, show you what the head pipe looks like and keep moving. Okay, so here's the new head pipe. We're ready to start getting it set up. Now, this particular one, I really dig it. Um, we've only installed one of these before and it was on a carbureted bike. So I'm interested to see how this goes um, on a fuel injected bike. Um, but in any event, it's a really good looking pipe. Trask's makes some really nice stuff and it's got a couple unique features uh, we'll talk about when we're over on the bike. But for now, what we're gonna do is get set up with uh, our flanges here and we'll talk about O2 sensor bungs a little bit. So first thing we gotta do is Go ahead and take the original uh, flanges that came off the old pipe, slide them on here. And we're just gonna be careful not to scratch anything. And then, while you can, in many cases, reuse the lock rings that hold these flanges on, we generally don't. Um, if they're at all twisted or rusted or anything like that, which most are, we usually toss them and replace them with new ones, which is what these are. So you're gonna take a pair of pliers and spread these as little as possible just to get them over the uh, end of the pipe and drop them on. And we'll just make sure that fits, which it does. And I'm gonna do the other one. 
Sorry, I'm trying to do this as best as I can so that it's visible on the camera, but not always perfect. Okay. And perfect. Now, in our case, uh, our bike does not have O2 sensors. Uh, early Delphi bikes do not have O2 sensors, although they do have uh, fuel injection. When you get to a little bit later on, uh, starting with the 96 inch motors, you've got O2 sensors that'll need to go in. Depending on who you ask and who you talk to, um, a lot of times they'll tell you to just leave the O2 sensors connected to the bike and connect them when the pipe goes back on. Um, I find that way more difficult and way more likely to break one of the wires twisting them around. So generally we unplug the O2 sensors, take them off with the pipe and put them in right now. Now in our case, we don't have O2 sensors and there are conveniently these plugs already put into the bungs. Now, while we won't be running O2 sensors on the bike, we do have wideband O2 sensors that need to go in for running the dyno. So these are very easy to get in and out uh, in, the, in the positions that they're in. So typically on a bike where it might be a little harder, we would just throw the wideband O2 sensors for the dyno in right now, and then they'd already be in when they go on. In this case, I'm just gonna leave these in here and uh, we'll change them out when we need to put the bike on the dyno. So this is ready to go on the bike. That's all we had to do. So we'll bring it back over and get it put on. All right, our next step before we put our head pipe on is to put our new exhaust gaskets in place. Now, if your exhaust gaskets are in good shape and they're the correct type for the pipe you're putting on, you don't have to change them. In our case, ours are removed, so we need to put new ones in. And fortunately, the Trask pipe comes with a new set, so we know they're gonna be the correct type. So these can sometimes be a little bit difficult to go in. Um, in our case, because the heads are super clean uh, and there's no junk in the exhaust ports, um, they're gonna slide right in. So if you can't get it, um, just be patient. Just push with your thumbs evenly around it, get it seated. Okay, so with the gaskets in, we'll grab the pipe and get that into position as well. All right. So now we wanna do is be careful here not to scratch anything. So just take your time and work the pipe into position. All right, so now with the pipe in position, but these uh, the nuts not tightened down yet, just loose so the pipe can still move around, we're gonna put the muffler on. Now, we like to put a little bit of anti-seize inside of here, so in the event you have to take this apart, you'll have a better shot of being able to do it. Okay, so the pipe slides in there and you may notice here, uh, there's no clamp or anything like that. And that's one of the things I like so much about this pipe is that unlike some of the others where, uh, you know, you need a clamp and it might leak and whatever, the confidence in a fabricated pipe like this, um, HPI is obviously normally our go-to, 
uh, is that the confidence that they have that this is gonna seal without having to mash it down. Now, one thing you do have to look out for is you got pretty little clearance here uh, between the muffler and uh, this passenger foot peg. So what we've done is while it doesn't look the best, we've got the big lock nut up on top and the head of the bolt down on the bottom just to have some more clearance between the pipe and this. So that's in place. We are gonna take the two bolts with washers that connect the bracket to the muffler and we're gonna get those started. We've got some blue Loctite on those. All right, cool. So we got those in place now. Uh, just started, you know, halfway down. They went in nice and easy, so everything is lined up, which is great. So now what we're gonna do is starting with the front head. We're gonna evenly torque down the nuts here, the nuts here, and our bolts there. So with everything tight, pipe installation is done. Obviously, like I mentioned before, if you've got O2 sensors, now would be the time to plug them in. But for us, we're pretty much set. The one last and incredibly important step you absolutely don't wanna miss is to wipe the pipe down. Obviously, I wasn't wearing gloves putting the pipe on. You can do that, which will eliminate some of the oils getting on it. But for me, I find it's just, just as easy to wipe the whole thing down, uh, denatured alcohol or something like that to get all your fingerprints on it before you put any heat into it or those fingerprints are gonna be there forever. So I'm gonna wipe this down and we're gonna move on to getting the tank put back on this bike. Okay, so in my haste to get to putting the tank back on, I forgot we still got an air cleaner that needs to get put on here. So we're gonna do that first. So the air cleaner we're running is a stage one big sucker from Arlen Ness. Um, these are a great air cleaner uh, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is they're pretty inexpensive as far as air cleaners go. Uh, there are some that'll cost you upwards of 500 bucks. These are, I think, under 200 right now. So really not bad. This particular one comes with the synthetic uh, air filter. So it doesn't get oiled, it just gets washed and you put it back on. These are great, they last a long time. Um, if you're running an open air cleaner uh, cover, you, also you can get this sort of black and chrome kind of looking thing here, which looks pretty good. In our case, we're running the stock cover over this. So you're not gonna see it, but it's gonna work really well. So. To start off with this, obviously this is pretty simple. I know we've showed how to do this before, but we're gonna do it again here. Um, basically, we've got a gasket to go on here and we've got some O-rings that need to go in place uh, so we can seal everything up uh, between our head breathers and our throttle body. So I'm gonna start by putting some O-rings into the backing plate. Now what I've done is put a little bit of grease onto the O-rings because they have a tendency to wanna slide out when you're trying to put this together. So putting a little grease tends to help kind of stick them in place. It also helps sort of like oil normally would uh, so that you don't damage the O-rings when you tighten them down. So they'll slide into place. So we'll take our breather bolts, slide those through. And this can be a little challenging to do when you kind of get everything in here. But what I like to do, although it's not maybe the exact normal way, is I like to get this started uh, so that I can kind of keep my hands on everything and then slide the gasket in once this is in place, slide the gasket in between and then put the other bolts in. So start by tightening these down. And I should mention there is already Loctite on these fasteners and we use Loctite on everything on the air cleaner. And not the least of which these breather bolts have a tendency to want to come loose sometimes. So we actually use red Loctite a lot of the time on them. And that's what we have on here. Um, if you're comfortable with that, feel free. Uh, most uh, instructions, manufacturers, things like that, they're gonna call for blue. Uh, but we haven't had any problem getting these out with uh, the red Loctite on there. And honestly, the heat from the engine um, really kinda does away with it anyway. So really not a big deal. All right, so the next thing to do is line up our gasket here 
and I'm going to slide that in from the back side. Okay. And just making sure we got all the bolt holes lined up. Okay. Now, this comes with these standoffs that have studs in them that need to be screwed into it. Uh, we've done that already, and we red Loctited the stud into the standoff, and we've got blue Loctite on the other side of it to go in here. And one thing you wanna be really careful of whenever you're doing an air cleaner is, whatever the method of attaching the backing plate to the throttle body, make sure that you understand if there's any level of protection from if any of these screws back out, that they don't go down your throttle body because it will grenade your motor and it does happen. So most modern good quality air cleaners now have some degree of safety, whether it's a captive screw or something like that, or in the case of these that they can't come out, they can't back out because the stud is connected to the standoff, which is still gonna be connected to the uh, air filter. So it's all gonna be held in place. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna snug these down and then we'll start to tighten everything. Okay, so the backing plate's on. Just clean off a little of this grease I got on here. And we're ready to go ahead and put the air filter itself on. Okay, just make sure you get your holes lined up with your studs and put your screws in. Again, blue Loctite on these guys already. Okay, and our air cleaner is on. Obviously the next step would be to put the cover on. I'm gonna leave that off for the moment because this is a new motor and we're gonna be doing a lot of inspection and close looking as we start it up for the first time and I wanna give myself as much room to see everything as I can. So we'll put this on at the end. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the tank on. So we've got our tank back on, threw the seat back on as well. This bike is just about buttoned up. So I don't know about all of you, but I think this bike is looking pretty, pretty killer. Obviously we got a couple little odds and ends done today. We've got our pipe on, got our air cleaner on, foot controls finished up, tracker die case saver, FX Heart Division crash bar, got our tank back on, seat, everything pretty much ready to go. We've got a few little details that we need to button up, um, mostly related to the new motor. 
We've got to prime the oil system. Uh, we've got new spark plugs. We've got a gap to put in there. Uh, we also, very importantly, have to put together a uh, base fuel map for this uh, so we can start it up because uh, we don't have a fuel map in there right now. So I hate to disappoint you all, but that is where we're going to leave it for today. We are not quite ready to fire this bike up. So we're going to have another segment coming in this series real, real soon. And that's going to be the first startup. We'll get it on the dyno and uh, we'll show you what this bike can do. So stick around. Hopefully you're subscribed and uh, we'll see you next time.